Alrighty, race fans, welcome to another edition of the Workbench. Well, today we got a new product. Um, right here, this is a O ring independent front end set. And you got to ask yourself, why do we want to have an O ring independent front end set as opposed to the more traditional independent front axle set that uses the sized donuts? Well, we'll talk about that. Um, one of the issues, and maybe the biggest issue with this traditional independent front end set are these sized donuts. Okay, these are essentially custom made tires that are ground to size. If you're, you know, racing in a club situation where very small changes in front tire diameter make sense, then this is a good product to use it's certainly you know a professional grade product uh, simply simply because of the ability to run these sized donuts that that's really the the more important aspect of this as opposed to you know the independent nature although that is a benefit um, is being able to run sized front tires and make very small changes in front tire height uh, even to the point to where maybe if your chassis is not perfectly square you could run a slightly smaller or larger tire on one side to kind of make up any deficiencies on that and because it's independent rotating then it wouldn't make any difference but that I think these are a small small part of the market where I think more guys would benefit from an independent o-ring front end set because then you can run sized o-rings which we already have for our standard o-ring front set like you would have say for you know mega g and mega g plus you know tyco wide pan we also use them on a viper v-spec other things like that so and then the hobbyist can you know he can source o-rings himself if he doesn't like the sizes that we offer but this will get you in the neighborhood and it will make I think a better handling car at the margin um, simply because you do have an independent rotating situation so let's get into some details all right so let's put one together here real quick so what you do you get a keeper and I'm using my test my uh, setup block here and get a hub and set it down over the keeper okay make sure you get a hard surface either like a wood block or a piece of steel or something but don't try to put do this on a soft surface it won't work and then put your axle in hold it and then get something flat like these tweezers and you can see how these tweezers are kind of scarred up and then that gives you something for your thumb to press straight down on okay now what I'm gonna do these o-rings are gonna come with stainless steel spacers so we're gonna put a couple of those on there for a minute and we're gonna get another keeper and another hub And get that now. I'm gonna load that on there. Oh, kind of gets a little fiddly. Okay, and then here again, press straight down. So now I've got the hub set all put together. And the reason why I do it like this is because this particular example. We're going to pop it into a Tyco wide pan. Okay. Pop on our front tires. And there we have it. Independent axle set for Tyco wide pan. Now, depending on your chassis, you can add like on this one here, this is legal width. 
in terms of total the axles are right at the legal width in a tech block okay so any particular chassis that you use this front area is going to be slightly different so in order to take up any slack in here you either add spacers or you could over push these keepers just a touch let's get in this kind of a little scooch okay so you can see that you know we've got a little bit protruding there so you can just keep you know adjusting that as you like it right and then this would also be the same for like say Tycho Narrow okay because the Tycho Narrow this is the same geometry in terms of this width up here you would just use the smaller o-rings that are identified for Mega G, Mega G Plus, and Tyco Narrow. All right, so let's take that off, set that aside. All right, so here's a Mega G Plus that's got a standard uh, O ring front axle set on it. And we're just going to pop these off. These are tweezers as a lever. And then here we can probably just pull those apart like that okay so we've got we're going to put a spacer back on one side fish this through the car okay Get our spacer on. Get our keeper down there. Okay, and then set all that down on there. And voila. So now, you can, now this particular chassis here, for instance, is a lot wider, so we we do have independent rotation, but you almost don't need the spacers on this one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pull, I'll lever this thing off. So. Take our spacers off. Okay. And if you can't see, I apologize, but I can't figure out how to do all this at one time and then be able to show you everything that's what my hands are doing but the result here is like okay about that much side play okay is really all you need so there you go for mega g plus and mega g and these would be the appropriate tires for it Pretty awesome. All right, then you can put them on a Viper or a Bulldog. I've already got two examples right here of those already done. And with the Viper, we use the um, stainless steel spacers. So that's about perfect with the Viper as well as Bulldog. Now what I did find, these spacers actually do help, in my opinion, in terms of any side loading. Um, because 
this Delrin is rubbing against the metal, which I think is actually maybe a bit of a smoother surface than maybe the side of the chassis. So one thing to note on these spacers, most anybody's spacers are the ones that I give you, you'll notice that. There's almost a smooth side and a rough side. If you kind of flop them around, you'll see as the light glints off of them that on the sheet that these things are coming through, they're stamping them out. Okay, so what happens is this, is this thing is stamped out. It may have a little bit of a curl going around it. Just a very microscopic amount. But also the finish of the metal on the back side is a little rougher than the front side, if you want to call it that. But when I install them, I make sure that this smoother side is against the o-ring hub so when that thing side loads this thing can rub against this more polished edge so just little things like that little things like that so all right I think that covers it um, on the web cart these will be sold basically in a bag like this where you'll get the axle, the keepers and the uh, spacers okay and then you will get whatever o-rings whatever size o-rings that you deem necessary for your application that way it saves me from having to bag up a bag like this with Tyco wide or whatever you're just gonna have to go over and make a selection on the, uh, the tire size. I'll try to call all that out in the uh, the item description. But uh, yeah, I think this is going to provide a good value for you guys where you get the benefit of uh, independent O-ring front end set, which I think for the most part is really helpful on really tight turns. Um, more gradual turns, not so much. Um, but in, in tight instances, it'll help keep the car from getting unsettled you know you'll be able to carry probably a touch more speed into into tight corners that's one of the benefits of it so all right uh, email me if you got any questions that's generally the best thing to do uh, I don't again I don't sit there and troll my own YouTube site very much so you if you post a question or whatever it may be a week or two weeks or whatever before I really see it and answer it so just uh, send me an email if you got a, uh, a question. That's generally the best way because I'm in front of the computer all day processing orders, and that's uh, emails are coming and going all day long. All right, guys, thank you. See you.